Hi there, Brett Hornby here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to sort of share my personal vlog number four about the Labor Day Classic between the Calgary Stampeders and Edmonton Eskimos and my experiences with the whole rivalry between the Battle of Alberta, the Calgary Stampeders and the Edmonton Eskimos. Actually right now I'm on the road here in Whitecourt, Alberta. Here staying at the Canada BC Inns Hotel, which is a fairly new hotel and fairly small hotel chain that has hotels in smaller cities that has a lot of people working in the logging and the oil industry here in North Central Alberta. The reason why I'm in Lake Court is uh, tomorrow I'll be heading east to Edmonton for the Labor Day rematch game where I'll be where am I right on the road at Commonwealth Stadium, but uh, today, I, on the Friday, I decided to uh, make a trip up the Cowboy Trail where I went west to Cochrane from Calgary and then drove north on the Cowboy Trail, Highway 22, all the way up to Marathorpe. And the uh, closest community to Marathorpe with plenty of hotels is Whitecourt up Highway 43, which that's the same highway that takes you up to Grand, Grand Prairie and into Dawson Creek and the BC so gives you an idea I'm fairly north but sort of the north central part of Alberta anyway let's get back to personal vlog number four on the Labor Day Classic and if you enjoy my sports takes or my sporting event moments or uh, any of my previous personal vlogs or any senior videos make sure you hit subscribe on my YouTube channel and follow everything that I offer and post on there and I try to post at least something weekly or if I not in front of the camera just at least some filler content at least weekly but uh, as we head into the fall here I got a lot more recap videos coming up with the hockey and lacrosse season around the corner so anyway the Liberty Classic is definitely uh, in the regular season it's the biggest game of the season behind the playoffs and the run to the Grey Cup but uh, it's usually, most seasons, the first game that you play your your heated rival, in the case of the Bell, Alberta. The Calgary Stampeders biggest rival is the Edmonton Eskimos, all part of the Bell of Alberta, which uh, I'm actually, if you look on YouTube and search the Bell of Alberta, TELUS, which is a telecommunications company here up here in Canada, actually they put together a nice 60-minute video talk, talking about, you know, the Bell of Alberta and it goes way back between, you know, before the Flames, Oilers, Stampeders, and Eskimos, and even goes way back to the, you know, the first settlers and the first nations that settled the land here in Alberta, and, and then eventually carries on about the rail line and where, was, where the Alberta capital is going to be. Yeah, that's a nice video. I'll put that in the description too, but the... I actually counted that uh, since 1995, I've actually been to 22 Labor Day Classics. This is just the Monday game where the game's always in Calgary where the m Eskimos come in. I mean, the only years that I missed was 1996 because I didn't have my season tickets until 1997. And uh, 2001, perils of working retail sometimes. You don't get the day off, but I've been to every Labor Day game since then. So that's a pretty good record, and uh, and I know the first time I caught my first live rematch game was in 2007 up at Edmonton. It was on a radio contest with the with the morning show Mike Richards, who's now I think he has his own independent show. But uh, this is Mike Richards in the morning. He actually left the Fan 960 in Calgary and went to TSN radio there for a while. I believe if you search him on YouTube now, he has his own private uh or his own radio show now running his own show mike richards raw so uh that's the mike richards i'm talking about not the uh nhler who recently played with the uh los angeles kings but uh yeah that was my first rematch game and then so 2014 was the first year that they they moved the rematch game from friday to saturday so i've gone to the saturday game in 14 15 and 16 i didn't go last season because I decided to go to the second game in later October, anticipating a bigger game, which some way 
had a preview of the uh, Western Final that year, last year, and then I'll be heading east to Edmonton tomorrow in 2018 for the Saturday game. But, uh, I mean, most most years, I mean, you got a lot of hype coming in. It's, uh, I mean, you kind of get a playoff atmosphere. It's, you know, prize on the line with uh, the Battle of Alberta. And, and actually, the last 20 years, Calgary's actually won more games than the Edmonton Eskimos, but the season series or the all-time series still has a couple games for the Edmonton Eskimos because they definitely had their heyday there in the in the 80s and the early 90s there before Calgary got dominant. But, uh, but it's definitely uh, some years live up to the hype. Other years there's been some duds and blowouts, but there's always fun coming in knowing the, you're, you're facing a team that you love to hate. And even then, it's it's not just exclusive to the Bell of Alberta. I mean, on the Sunday, you always have the the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and go to Regina to play the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And actually, a couple of years ago, I actually made the trip to Regina to capture that game. And it's just as tense between Winnipeg fans and Saskatchewan fans. And, you know, the atmosphere coming into the stadium. I made sure I... I went in 2016 because it was the last year that the Saskatchewan Rough Riders played at the old Mosaic Stadium, so I wanted to say at least there for the least last game. And then last game in the old stadium, I haven't been to the the new stadium yet to, for a live game, but uh, I plan to do that one of these years. And then you got the Battle of Ontario where you have the Hamilton Tiger Cats. They host the Toronto Argonauts on the Monday. And in the last few years, that game's been actually following the Calgary Edmonton game. And then the What's Left Bowl, of some years, uh, Montreal plays BC or Ottawa. I mean, this past week, the Ottawa Red Blacks hosted the Montreal Alouettes, which personally I think that rivalry should stay because they're both a train ride away. And they've had a good rivalry in the, in the 1970s, especially when they had their. Heyday, and that leads to BC Lions. But uh, I say, if Halifax ever gets their team, or somewhere in Atlantic Canada, you got your coast to coast rivalry. So then everybody can have a a Labor Day Classic to uh, you know play and look forward to. But uh, it's debatable which is the best one. I mean, I'll be biased and say the Calgary Edmonton one is the the best one. But uh, I've seen fans on TV and. And then the Winnipeg Saskatchewan game, they it's just as intense and just as fun being a part of that. And then they swing around the next week and have their rematch game, but this time it's on the road for the team that hosts the Labor Day game. And interestingly, you might have heard the term the Banjo Bowl. Well, the when Saskatchewan goes to Winnipeg to play the uh, the rematch game. I remember that Troy Westwood, the kicker at the time, he he called uh, Ryder fans, you know, banjo picking hicks, and then then he backtracked and said, well, I don't think Ryder fans can play the banjo, so I think it's since 2004, it's the banjo bowl, and and I believe that there's a trophy that comes on the line and benefits their local lotteries, and, and I mean, here we are in the 2018 season, actually, the Saturday there's a triple header, and it's all rematches from the, the Labor Day game. Last one being that me, I'll be going to Commonwealth and in my red cheering on the Calgary Stampeders in their house, which hopefully this won't be the only time this year because I'm hopefully, and if you looked at my prediction video, I think I'll be uh, I'll be back at Commonwealth either way, wearing my red representing the Calgary Stampeders, but I think I'll be back there late November cheering on their boys, hopefully to a great cup victory, or at least be in the game, but uh, I'm beyond just being happy to be in the game. But anyway, I mean, this is the, something to always look forward to. I mean, I mean, it's always going to be tough to top my uh, first Labor Day, live Labor Day game, because in 1995, a guy named Jeff Garcia, who at the time still hasn't uh, proven himself, Calgary had Doug Flutie, the former Heisman Trophy winner, and he got hurt with his elbow injury and needed to get surgery on it. And it looked like the 95 season was going off the rails. And Jeff Garcia, he his first game at home at McMahon, he lit up the he lit up the team with the 
led the field with six touchdowns and over five years passing, and I believe, I think that actually was a franchise record that day, and since then, and I haven't, it's been close, but uh, I haven't, haven't come close to beating the 95 Labor Day Classic. I'd say this past Labor Day Classic was a, was a classic with a back and forth rough game, and Calgary won it on the last second field goal, and another Labor Day Classic that I remember that, uh, was quite memorable talking about the game in Calgary is that in 2003 Edmonton was out playing Calgary but I remember I think his name I mean it was James Hunden he had like two you know kickoff returns for a touchdown and that's why Calgary won but the other thing I remember was the uh, I think Calgary had a at the time Ricky Ray a young Ricky Ray was the quarterback for the Edmonton Eskimos and it got rough on the end and sideline where he got pushed out of the play and there was a brawl and all I remember everyone was fighting and then eventually the referee had to like pull out the penalty card like the old knights saying about all the penalties that happened on that play. So that was 2003. And then I think I remember 1999 that, that was the only one that for the Monday game that I remember it went to overtime. Fortunately we lost one on a close you know, a close goal line stand that Edmonton just got over, and and then I think I also remember 2007. That was the year that too many streakers came on the field, and the you know McMahon stand got a little tougher on preventing people coming on the field. And the other one I remember 2012, Edmonton missed a long field goal that we had to run it out and preserve the one point lead. So I definitely still have some memorable games from the Monday game, but. 1995 is still the top, and of course, thrown in there, there was a couple uh, blowouts and duds. I mean, I know in 2010 we beat Edmonton like 52 to five, I believe, or some something crazy like that. But thing is, at that time, I disliked Saskatchewan more because of uh, you know they always beating us in the playoffs, and you know, I was continuing with their fans. I mean, I Eskimo fans, I actually find. For the most part, are a little more better than Ryder fans that at least come to Calgary. I mean, I still, you know, got to admire the dedication of Ryder fans. And times I've been to, you know, in Saskatchewan, where I read, uh, Ryder fans for the most part have been good to me. I, I don't, you know, diss them or insult them at the game. But then when it comes to the now, let's go to the rematch game. For I right, remember. I would have caught it live was 2007 was my first live game and that was one with the like I said the radio contest and then I went to the rematch game in 2014 which was the first time that the game moved from Friday to Saturday which I'm sure the players and coaches on both sides don't mind the extra day after playing on Monday so I went to the 2014-15-16 game and as I mentioned I didn't go to the 17 game because I figured a bigger game was in store late October because Calgary went to Edmonton twice and then I'm going there tomorrow and what I remember obviously the whole experience was a blur with the the fan bus with Mike Richards and all the booze and people I met and then other than that I mean I remember in 2015 we we lost a big we lost big time in that year and that started the Edmonton Eskimos big run to the Grey Cup because that was they didn't lose a game at all after we beat them in Calgary on 2015 but I also remember that being a nice hot day in Edmonton as I was doing some sightseeing and then it rained that day and then 2016 that game went to overtime and it acquired two overtimes but I just remember how Calgary came back and pulled that one out of the fire and and how actually Edmonton missed a long field goal so I definitely have some memorable rematch games but I think the most memorable one that I was home back in 2001 that uh, I remember Calgary lost that was the Labor Day game I missed but Calgary lost the last second field goal to lose by one in 2001 so many ones here but this will be a recurring theme trust me but uh, I remember the Emden Eskimos they scored a, a late touchdown to, to go up by one and they attempted a two-point convert to uh, at least go up by three for some reason. I'm thinking that Calgary will have no time left, and 
try to have to go for a Hail Mary and hope for pass interference to, you know, try to attempt a field goal. But what happened that game was that Edmonton was up by one. William Fields, I remember his name was Fields, intercepted the two-point convert and returned it back to the end zone, just get two points and win by one. So we couldn't get any more even in 2001 where we lost by one, but it was in the last second field goal. But then we won by one in most spectacular fashion. But yeah, I mean that's definitely always brings the best out of uh, brings the best out of both teams when uh, you got the Liberty Classic. I mean the last few years, Calgary and Edmonton have been the uh, top teams in the league. But even even some years when one team is on one end of the standings and the other being the bottom end, it's he almost can throw the record out the window on that day. And speaking of that day, it's a big day for fans too because uh, I remember hearing stories in 1992, Calgary won the Grey Cup that year with Doug Flutie. When we got Doug Flutie that year, Calgary won the Grey Cup, their first Grey Cup in 21 years. I was 10 at the time, so I didn't realize how big of a deal it was, but uh, there were fans that either canceled their season tickets or booed the team. I heard some fans booed the Stampeders when they came back at the airport with the Grey Cup, and the fans were saying, yeah, but you didn't win on Labor Day, because we didn't win on Labor Day that year, and I remember Flutie threw for... He had one of his rare bad games for Calgary, and he threw for six interceptions that game. And uh, I said there were some fans that didn't take it well that, yeah, we won the Grey Cup in 21, 21 years, but uh, didn't win on Labor Day. <laughs> Tells you how big of a game it is. That's like saying the Calgary Flames win the Stanley Cup, but we didn't, but we canceled our season tickets and still booed them at the rally, saying, but you didn't beat the Oilers and the Canucks. That's the only analogy I come up with, but anyway, I just don't want to ramble on too much longer here, but uh, this is my personal vlog on all the Labor Day classics I've taken in, and and I'm still anticipating uh, a good one up at Commonwealth tomorrow when I'll be in my red, cheering, cheering loud and proud for my Calgary Stampeders in their house, and uh, apparently that for the first time in several years they're having their back-to-school game where students, college students, grade school students, get free tickets because I remember the rematch game on the Friday they used to get over 50,000 fans at the stadium and in the last couple of years when I went up for Edmonton they maybe one year they got just over 40,000 but they only got about 37, 38,000 and I mean the stadium holds 60,000 but uh, yeah I'm definitely looking forward to uh, an, uh, another game anticipating game tomorrow especially it was a rough one there on Monday and one of the last second field goal it was pretty close but you know if you enjoy everything that you see on my YouTube channel make sure you hit like subscribe and uh, I'll see you at the next video.